Welcome everyone, and as you no doubt saw in the title, it's time to break down a scene from the much-loved movie 12 with a scene animated by probably among one of the most well-known animators from this franchise, Tadayoshi Yamamoro. He's also the animation supervisor and character designer for this film. This movie also brings back the classic combo of the two main figures behind the fan favorite Margin Vegeta vs Goku fight in 232, with the legendary Shigeyasu Yamauchi handling the storyboard and direction, and of course Yamamoro being the key animator. And here he provides what I think is among some of his best key animation from Dragon Ball Z. But now let's get into it. So starting off, Yamamoro's scene begins just after the one with Trunks and Goten, starting from when Janemba launches off, with Goku ducking under his attack and a couple of blows being exchanged, and then a big solid kick to the face. So beginning off, the deep impact on the ground gives some good anticipation to the launch off. The blurry effects and the reflective light bouncing off these shards is also attention grabbing. The staging in this cut is also clear with a good silhouette, the slow motion effect through the timing and spacing gives the audience a chance to understand the action that's taken place and prepare for the next big one. However, the emphasis of speed isn't lost as he switches to animating on ones, aiding in portraying that sudden rapid speed. As Goku dodges, there's some decent anticipation leading into his action. A little rigid, but outside of that his expressions are nicely drawn and look menacing. With Janemba's kick, the follow through and general motion is a little awkward, especially in part to how his leg disappears in this frame. So there is this really wide amount of spacing in between part of the action, giving a slightly disjointed flow to the movement. Thereafter though, with Goku's kick, the anticipation behind it is fine. However, the way the action correlates with the direction of the camera flows quite nicely. The actual impact is good enough. Leading into the next hit though, there is a close up of Goku's hand, good directional motion to the drawings, the kick into Janemba feels weighty and has an explosive feel thanks to good squash and stretch. The exaggeration to the drawings gives a lot of power. The applied force is also displayed well with the opposing lines of action, as well as the contrast with straight to curve. Additionally, there's clarity to the action. And again, there's sort of that slow motion effect in play as he holds in on the key pose, giving extra impact and emphasis. Moving on though, Janemba recovers and grabs Goku's leg. But Goku returns again with another strike to the head, then following it up with a key blast attack before Janemba teleports it away and it comes back at Goku, blowing him backward. So Janemba grabbing Goku's leg is animated fine, although the next cut does look a little rigid perhaps at first glance, with the lack of bend in their bodies and also the linear arc to the movement. However, with Goku in particular, I believe this is to show that he still has the upper hand and is ready to spring into an attack. If he was being helplessly flung through the air, this would be a valid criticism, but I believe it works in this case. In the next cut, you have some great dynamic poses, love the strong bend to the arms and legs, and the general rhythm to the gestures. Again, you have the hold on the action for those big hits, which is something you can see all over his work. Now, as Goku prepares the key blast attack on the directional front, the change of lighting is quite distinctive and prepares the audience for the next action that's about to happen. Animation-wise, there's a nice arc to the movement with a smooth feel to the release. Although if he had added overshoot to the motion, it would have made it feel just a bit more weighty. Some nice poses though, love the directional forces in this one. Moving forward, the next cut has some simple but cool effects. The layouts are really clear and the hold on these two actions, Janemba teleporting the attack away, then sending it to Goku, gives further clarity to the sequence. Furthermore, there's a good sense of rhythm displayed through the orientation of the hair and gestures. The timing also gives a very snappy release to the launch. Anyways, after Goku flies back, he gets his footing and gets a knee in this time, and right after following it up with a spinning kick. So again, I've brought this up many times already, but I've got to compliment some of these poses. Really stylish work. The launch off is timed out really great as well, such a snappy motion. Also got to mention the overlapping action with the bootlaces, which was a nice detail. I will note that there's a small continuity error with how Janemba looks around, as if Goku's coming from behind when he was clearly shown from the front. And in the next cut, it displays that as well. Not really a big deal, it's so quick you don't really notice it, but I thought it was interesting to point out. Now moving on with the next kick, I like the choice to have him spin into it, as it provides a lot of energy and build up leading into the attack. The impact again feels quite solid, and timing out Goku's lake movements on ones, the spacing and smears gives a sense of a devastating but rapid action. But Goku then goes in for another key blast attack with some good follow through with the arm movement, however this time pressing it directly into Janemba, catching him off guard, or so it initially seems before he breaks away. 
Now, Yamamura notes in a 2019 interview that this particular scene was one of the most difficult scenes he's ever had to animate, with all the different shapes and shadows. Even so, it's a well-executed morphing scene and is rather complex and detailed. It's also animated on one, so it has a very smooth feeling to the disintegration. Then, Keisuke Masanaga unexpectedly pops up, and although this video isn't about him, it's a short scene, so I'll still go over it. So, like you would expect with Masanaga, he provides great poses, there's so much rhythm to his gestures, with the shapes breaking away from the character designs for something more dynamic. There's a lot of bends with the arms and legs, adding that more lively feel to the movement. Additionally, you have that flowy and sharp shaped hair, which looks excellent. It's also interesting seeing how his work is left mostly uncorrected. Yamamoro is known for being quite firm with corrections, essentially redraws of an animator's key drawings. And even more surprising, considering Masanaga's work would purposely lean off model, probably more so than any other animator on this film. There still seems to be some minor alterations with the shading, but for the most part, Masanaga's style shines through, and his take on Super Saiyan 3 looks great. But Janemba then fully reappears, dishing out the same attack on Goku, with some quite detailed effects as he reappears, with Masanaga delivering some insanely cool impact frames. The extra little detail of his tail still growing back as this all happens is nice as well. And with Yamauchi as the director, like you would expect, his love for purple and pink hues dominates the screen. Following on into the next cut, there's a really nice flow to the shape design in regards to the plumes of smoke, a very loose feel is communicated through the path it takes. However, Masanaga's scene ends there, quite surprising that's all he does and considering in terms of skill, he's among one of the top animators in the staff list for this film, it makes it all the more odd. I can't help but wonder like with how Yutaka Nakamura was randomly credited for quite a lengthy scene in Movie 5 recently, when for years it was thought he only contributed a small section with Piccolo, that there could be a similar case here with another and much larger scene for Masanaga in this film. Although considering the idiosyncratic traits to an animator like Masanaga, it stands to reason that any animation outside of the scene would have been identified long ago, unless of course it was heavily corrected to the point not only his art style was erased, but even perhaps his timing, as a supervisor can make additions there if need be as well. And with Yamamoro's history, that's certainly possible. The only problem is that it isn't consistent with his approach to supervising Masanaga's scene here. There's honestly a list of outlying factors that could apply, such as a lack of time for example, but at that point it's just kind of guesswork, and it's why I'm really split. And to make it even more odd, both Yamamoro and Masanaga are credited together and separate from the rest of the other key animators, so perhaps this is all they did. Anyway, getting close to the end here, Yamamoro then follows up right after with Janemba as he fires a mouth blast, with a zoom in of Goku's shocked expression before it cuts away. Animation wise, there's nothing significant here, but I can't look over Yamamoro's fierce facial expressions for Janemba, illustrated through his classic arched up and curved eyes which is a feature you can see all over his work in this era. The large wide mouth furthermore goes well in illustrating this menacing look, but with that final cut ends his seam. So in summary, the general flow to this fight is excellent. I have seen some criticism in regards to the slow feeling to movement in not only this fight, but also his work generally in this era, but I personally don't see it as a problem. It's quite a deliberate way to add flair and emphasis on movement, and I personally think it works. Yamauchi's storyboard though can't go unmentioned either, his ability to portray interesting choreography is very much present here, and Yamamoro's execution of it crafts an incredibly memorable scene. And of course, his staple, detailed artwork is very appealing. There's also a good amount of movement to this scene, which is noteworthy considering how Super Saiyan 3 is quite a detailed design. And an interesting tidbit is that the most difficult part of drawing Super Saiyan 3, according to Yamamoro, wasn't his complex bushy hair, but actually his facial expressions and trying to make him still look like Goku with this change in appearance. But with that final note though, we'll conclude this breakdown. So thank you everyone for watching and especially if you did till the end. It's been a while since I've done an entirely animation centric video and well just generally a new addition to the series. A lot of the recent content has been more so on studios and art styles. So I hope you enjoyed something a little different. I certainly enjoyed a change of topic. Felt a little rusty at first actually when I began writing the script for this one, but I quickly got into the swing of things. But yeah, with that, thanks again and I'll see you later.